Hi, I'm Christina Veselak. I'm the director of the Academy for Addiction and Mental Health Nutrition, which teaches practitioners all around the world how to address the third leg of the recovery school stool, the biochemical, feeding our brain to help prevent relapse. I also run an online coaching business specifically for relapse prevention that addresses all three legs of the stool, the biochemical, the psychological and emotional and social, maybe there's more than three legs there, and the spiritual. And today I'm talking with Chris Egan, or we're talking together about how to prevent relapse to both substance use disorders, other addictive disorders, but just depression, fear, and anxiety. Chris. Hi. Yes. Um, so good to see you. And um, I know during this time, I've been working with my clients, and there's definitely a, like you just said, climate of fear and anxiety that I think needs to be addressed. Um, people are worried about um, their recovery and what they're going to do if we are, in fact, here for, <laughs> it seems like it changes every day, but um, yes. at least where I live, I know we're in shelter for the next, I believe, two weeks. And I think it's still kind of settling in what that even means. So um, I do think it's important that we sit down here and kind of brainstorm and share each other's knowledge and information on what we can do to support our clients um, during this time so they can stay in recovery. Well, absolutely. And Chris, can you talk just for a minute about how you use your business to support people in recovery? Oh, sure. Um, so I, my business is online nutrition for recovery, um, nutrition number four recovery.com. And I meet with clients virtually by zoom meetings, just like this one, um, all over the country and even the world. I had somebody mm -hmm. in London and, um, me too. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. And, um, I support them by using amino acid therapy, um, going through the symptom chart, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute, um, and also nutritionally on how they can keep their brain online right now, stay in recovery, um, continue to make good choices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not use this situation. Um, I shouldn't say use this situation. It's nobody does it. On, nobody does it on purpose, but let this situation um, sideline them from, from what they know is best for them and what they want to do. You know, I really love that. Not letting the situation sideline us from who we are as human beings as mm -hmm. well as our recovery goals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, who I want to be as a human being is grounded and aware. So aware of what's going on. I don't want to stick my head in the sand and pretend it's not happening. Mm -hmm. But I want to do that awareness from both a really grounded place as well as a really loving and compassionate place. Both compassion for myself because I'm here with everybody else, as well as how can I share my gifts and skills and information in a really loving way with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I liked something you wrote on your newsletter that went out the other day on um, peace, seeking peace. Mm -hmm. And that really resonated with me because when I was seeking recovery, um, the one thing I wanted was a calm and peaceful life. That was my mm -hmm. intention. <laughs> yeah. and yeah, and that's what recovery can do for us in times like this is to still be able to have a calm and peaceful life despite, you know, figurative walls crumbling around us and using the tools that we have on the three-legged stool exactly. And this what, mm -hmm. what I work on with is the, with my clients mostly is the biochemical stool, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Well, yeah. I think we have to, Chris, because for us to even have a spiritual life, for us to use any of the other recovery tools that we've developed for ourselves or that we've been taught and given, we have to have an online brain. Our mm -hmm. brain itself has to be working yeah. for us to be able to do anything else. And that's what you and I are about in our teaching is how to support our brains functioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked um, one of my clients talked about how after um, going through, I believe it was eight weeks with amino acid therapy. And then now she just uses them intermittently. Mm -hmm. but one of the things she said was uh, no willpower required. And I really, really loved that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think that's one of the choices we have in this crisis, international crisis that we find ourselves in the middle of, is how can we find peace and groundedness and love without white knuckling it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I say all the time, it's our brain's job to allow us to cope with stress gracefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is stressful. Now, <laughs> are we going to do it gracefully, right? <laughs> but to do that, our brain needs to be fed optimally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's start with, you know, how we use food to feed our brain optimally. What do you, what do you tell your clients about food? Um, I am telling my clients as, of course, and everybody listening should know Christina is my mentor and I went through her class. <laughs> so anything I say, I think you're going to say too. Uh, so we will, we will elaborate. But um, to number one, eat protein every three to four hours is absolutely crucial. That's one of the very first things I'm telling my clients so that their brain will stay online so their blood sugar is regulated. Uh, so they don't get in that fight or flight mode where they're offline and grabbing for whatever substance or uh, mm -hmm. whatever behavior they use to make themselves feel better because uh, that's the absolute thing we're trying to avoid. So to make sure even in this kind of a situation where groceries are, shelves are empty, I mean, there's, I'm coaching my clients on how, what kinds of foods can you keep in your house that are quality mm -hmm. uh, organic, if, if you can, I mean, if you can, that's okay too, but we can put fresh meats and, fr and uh, fruits and vegetables can go into the freezer. We can buy organic frozen berries, organic frozen vegetables. Um, we have dried lentils. This is the time to make split pea soup. Um, really, you know, one of the things- I, I did yesterday. Did you really? That's I made so a lovely split pea soup. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm about to bust out my Instant Pot and finally figure out how it works because I'm always a crock pot person. But uh -huh. yeah, just, just to kind of go to the staples where it's not that complicated to nourish yourself, um, to eat your protein every four hours and to eat, eat real food is one thing I always say, eat real food. Um, so what about you? Are you, what are you telling your clients? Well, so, well, yesterday... I discovered that we were almost out of all oil. We had no butter, we had no coconut oil, we had no olive oil. It's like, how on earth in this time of stocking up did I manage to be completely without oil? <laughs> so we ran to the store and it was really interesting what was on the shelves. There was a lot of olive oil, there was a lot of coconut oil, and all the oils not so good for you weren't there. Oh. Oh, they were, they were, they just weren't there. Now yeah. we, our grocery store here, because we live in the middle of nowhere, is a Walmart. It's a pretty good Walmart. Mm -hmm. And so I bought organic coconut oil. I bought organic olive oil. I bought butter. Um, I was looking for an organic grapeseed oil, but they didn't have it. They had non-organic grapeseed oil. And I thought, mm, and I left it behind. Mm. Um, that's impressive. They had grapeseed oil. <laughs> they did. They did. I actually like our Walmart. And I bought a big head of cabbage. Nice. Okay. And so this morning I was thinking, okay, what do I want for breakfast? And I realized that I had some 
frozen perch that I had bought on our trip to Cincinnati a couple weeks ago to Costco. And I bought this big thing of perch and, you know, froze little serving sizes. So I pulled that out and defrosted it and sauteed it in olive oil with some sliced cabbage, mm -hmm. a little bit of a Indian um, simmer sauce, and just a little bit of mayonnaise. It was absolutely delicious. I had it for breakfast and lunch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, that's so interesting that you just said that because I actually just posted something on my Facebook group that to uh, eat dinner for breakfast because I posted mm -hmm. what I had last night showing, okay, I'm sauteing my broccoli and my asparagus and um, I had cooked chicken that I had prepared on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about the meal prep, meal planning. Don't get caught off guard. Don't be too hungry. You're going to be grabbing for something that's not good for you. And then just that boxed... Um, Trader Joe's has a frozen rice and it's not, you know, if you can make rice from scratch, great. But in a pinch, you know, my daughter and I were here and we're hungry. Just put it together. And then this morning I had the leftovers and I took the vegetables out, put them in the pan and cracked two eggs over it and scrambled it up. And that was breakfast. So yeah. dinner, like having, having your food in the morning is a great thing. There's no need to eat donuts and pancakes and waffles. Exactly. No need. And while I was teaching class this morning, right before class started, I took out a cup of kasha, which is roasted buckwheat grouts, which are gluten-free, and I love, put them in my rice cooker with three cups of water, a little bit of salt, and so that by the end of the class, they were completely cooked. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Absolutely delicious. I had it because I just needed a snack. I hadn't had any carbs with breakfast. And this is now a couple of hours later. So I just had that with a handful of dried cherries and walnuts. Uh -huh. Not very much, just, you know, though probably under a cup. And that carried me over until I was ready for lunch. Yeah, and it just took a tiny bit of preparation there. Which, like you said, you just put it in the pot and then let it do, it, let it do its thing. I, I like some of these instant pot things like rice cookers and whatever. They're so convenient. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that's the same thing, like like now is, I will speak for myself, like I refer to this, I've had an Instant Pot here since mid-January. <laughs> that, okay, now I can actually sit down and read the directions and dig in, uh -huh. kind of try to take this time as a time rather than to wish it away and oh, it's horrible, as to say, oh my gosh, when now we have when do we ever have extra time to sit down and do these projects and um, maybe go into the kitchen and cook and make some homemade granola with the oats that are in your pantry? Exactly. Right? Exactly. This is some of the lemonade we get to make out of the lemons. It that is. Life has given us right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. But you know, you said something about keeping blood sugar stable by eating protein every four hours, mm -hmm. which is our bottom line. You know, and even those doing more intermittent fasting just have to keep an eye on their mood if they've gone too long without food, if the anxiety kicks in because of the adrenaline and or we start finding ourselves snappy at people. Mm -hmm. But that we can also use the amino acid glutamine. Yes. You know, yes. and that's just such a wonderful thing to tuck in our purse, not that any of us are going anywhere right now, mm -hmm. but... You know, to have so that we don't forget if we need it, that we may not have a chance to eat. And we can give it to our kids. Or yeah. To our five-year-old who's having a blood sugar meltdown until we can get some food into him. Or our teenager. Or ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, that's such a great, actually, Christine, I hadn't thought of that because, number one, I doubt there's been a, a run on glutamine. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, there probably is glutamine, but to have it on hand so that your brain doesn't go offline and, and so that your teenage son, as you said, isn't having a meltdown. So, mm -hmm. and then of course, always be sure to take it. The idea is to take it in between meals so that blood sugar remains. That's right. But the idea for glutamine is also to take it if you have a craving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a craving for alcohol, 
if you have a craving for sugar, if you have a craving for any other substance or behavior that may not be so good for us, yeah. the glutamine feeds the prefrontal cortex. It can calm us down. It can turn off that adrenaline. It can buy us time to breathe, to settle, to remember and use our other recovery skills. So just like food, it buys us time. Mm -hmm. And it gets our brain functioning again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And some of the other amino acids uh, can also be used mm -hmm. in cravings like that. Probably they need to be uh, more educated in which amino acid to use for which symptom, which we can talk about a little bit. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about obsessive worry and fear and oh my God, what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month? Am mm -hmm. I going to have a job? Am I going to have a house? Is the world still going to exist, right? These places <laughs> our brain can take us to. Grabbing 85 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So for those, for those feelings, uh, tryptophan is what I use for mm -hmm. the worry and anxiety. Um, and um, as we know, 5-HTP also helps with... Exactly. So either 5-HTP or tryptophan. Mm -hmm. And one may be easier or harder to find than the other. Sometimes, you know, for those of you listening, tryptophan can make people a little more sleepy, but not always. Sometimes 5-HTP can upset your tummy a little bit, but not always. So finding out what works for you. But both of these, by supporting the production of serotonin, serotonin is our, <sighs> I can cope, everything's okay, brain chemical. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the one that um, when it's well-functioning, serotonin allows us to not worry, to stay in the moment, to flow, to let go of the, you know, things that are bugging us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have clients report, um, and just so if anyone's listening doesn't know, within two minutes sometimes people mm -hmm. can feel the effect. And a, even better would be to take it there in capsules to break open the capsule and put it on your tongue. Mm -hmm. So you feel if it, uh, the relaxation, you know, that Christine is describing. It is yeah. it, it's like that. And if it doesn't work, you might need to take a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's what we call trialing. It's what we call trialing, and it can be so powerful. If you are already on an antidepressant like um, Prozac or Zoloft or any of the SSRIs, you do have to be a little more careful with this one. And mm -hmm. maybe talk with Chris or talk with me directly or you know some of the other people trained through my academy to help you determine whether or not it's safe to take it if you are on an SSRI mm -hmm. um, or an MAO inhibitor. But sometimes even, even if your medication isn't holding you, taking just a tiny bit, maybe six, eight hours after you've taken your medication, just maybe a little fingertip, just can help you over that, you know, hump. Yeah. yeah. Things are getting really frightening and you can't seem to turn off your brain. Exactly. And uh, tryptophan is one that I definitely recommend, again, if with the precautions um, mm -hmm. in mind, if you're taking an SSRI or an MAO inhibitor, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but tryptophan, because as Christine said, it's uh, more sedating. So to take that at night is always a nice idea too. So you're not, when you're trying to fall asleep and you're worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow, that that will take the edge off. That, that will certainly take the edge off, along with one of my most favorite amino acids of all time, and that's theanine. Yes, I knew you were going to say theanine. <laughs> yeah. So theanine supports the GABA system, but it also, which helps with muscle relaxation and with being able to physically relax. So serotonin helps us mentally relax, mm -hmm. and GABA helps us physically relax. Mm -hmm. But Theanine, which is one of the GABA support amino acids, also helps block too much cortisol, too much adrenaline, too much of these fear and excitement um, hormones and neurotransmitters that can float around. 
Um, when we get really upset, when we read something in the paper, we see something on TV, or we absolutely need toilet paper and there's none to be found anywhere, right? <laughs> it all upset. We need that toilet paper. <laughs> you know, right. Um, theanine can just really help your brain settle down. So it's also helpful for sleep. It's helpful for the daytime too, when um, the all of these, when we get into our fight flight place, you know, the sympathetic nervous system. And another way of talking about the sympathetic nervous system is hyper arousal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we're in a frightening situation, and this is, can be a frightening situation, we can move into hyper arousal where we're just on alert and we're you know, looking for danger everywhere, and we're trying to figure out how to most protect ourselves and the people we love, we can go a little overboard. Yeah. And so these supplements can just help ease us down. But the thing we need to keep in mind, Chris, is that after hyperarousal, we move to hypoarousal. Mm -hmm. And we've used up our adrenaline, we've used up our cortisol, we've now moved to the op opposite direction and we can feel apathetic and we can feel powerless and depressed and like, I just don't care anymore. It's all way too much. Let me go get a drink. Let me smoke some weed. Let me, right? It's just, uh. mm -hmm. and that's where we can do a couple of things, right? We can bring in um, tyrosine. <laughs> I don't know. We were waiting for that. I was waiting. That's one of my favorite amino acids for me, for my mm -hmm. biochemistry. What does it do for you, Chris? Um, tyrosine was, is the first amino acid I tried when I was trialing myself. Um, and because of the symptoms of, for me specifically, it wasn't the apathetic depression, though it does help with that. It was, it was more of a scattered kind of everything there's so much to do right now that i can't possibly focus on any one thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, was taking the tyrosine was able to really for me bring my attention into focus mm -hmm. and, nice. uh, yeah and uh call it kind of the anti-procrastination yeah. <laughs> anti procrastination does that for me uh okay so you need okay. to be more of a chill pill yeah which is, it's more of a, hmm, <laughs> but. No, for me, it should. Oh, see, that's tyrosine to me. And I've done this with my clients where I will say, because I, I have someone who's quite similar to me, who's, she's using tyrosine um, very successfully. And when I went like this, she absolutely understood what I was talking about. Uh -huh. It just was like, because I have all these ideas and all these things I want to do. And, um, you know, it's, I, I've not been officially diagnosed with ADD, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have some version of it. <laughs> it's that sort of like getting to the the uh, getting to the five yard line, and but just not quite crossing over into the touchdown. So so getting so far, but just never quite mm -hmm. complete. And I've, I've ever since I started taking tyrosine, it's it's I can actually work on a task and then work on another task. Mm -hmm. And this is probably going to make you or somebody laugh. I have this thing and my son does it too, but I leave all the cupboard doors open. <laughs> and I come out I'm like, what's happening here? I actually close the cupboard doors now. <laughs> so anyway, and how that relates to relapse it, for, for the way I experienced tyrosine. Um, and then for, like we said, somebody else that just has that slow sluggish apathetic depression, which is different from low serotonin mm -hmm. depression, which was under a dark cloud type depression where somebody would take 5-HTP or tryptophan, um, the tyrosine can help with that, that apathetic slow, right. slow depression that maybe, oh my God, the, the sky is falling and uh, I just can't, you know. Or, life. right, or all my kids are at home and I'm <laughs> exhausted and I don't know how I can get through the day. Yeah. Right? The tyrosine is also good for that sort of thing. It's dopamine. It's the spark of life. Exactly. Yeah, and I do use it with my my youngest son. Calls it. We call it the spark. Mm -hmm. like, do you? Spark. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Spark. 
Yeah. So um, one of my favorites, definitely. And then we have low endorphin. Then we have low endorphins. And I was thinking about this, Chris, and I think one of the ways that really shows up in this sort of situation is with all the social isolation mm. that we're being forced into and all of the normal comforts and normal things we do to distract ourselves and to um, give us enjoyment is being taken away. Yeah. And what the endorphins do is they help us cope with both emotional pain, but also physical pain. Mm -hmm. But they, they are the neurotransmitters that get fired with bonding, with social contact, with, you know, feeling, feeling loved, feeling loving. I call it the warm fuzzies. Yeah. Okay. The endorphins are our warm fuzzy mm -hmm. neurotransmitter. They're, they're the hug. <laughs> they're the hug. Yeah. And we're not supposed to hug too many people right now, right? Maybe our close family members, unless somebody's sick, but we're not really supposed to hug anybody else. That's so true. Yeah. And so I think the endorphins, either in the form of D-phenylalanine or D-LPA, where we get both the dopamine support and the endorphin support, can really help boost our mood fill that lonely hole inside of us. Yeah. Not like some of these really addictive mood altering chemicals, because it's not as strong as that for one thing. And aminos are anti-addictive. I want to remind everybody of that because yeah. over time we fill our brain. And so we get to take less and less to get the same effect rather than more and more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I get that question all the time. You know, well, when do I go off of these or do I have to take these for the rest of my life? Or, and um, s somebody said it in a, in a really great way. I thought was your body tells you when you're done. Yeah. You know, it's your, your cup is full is what I like to say is, you know, when you start, you know, we're, we're depleted. Amino acids help with the neurotransmitter systems that are depleted, whether it's from alcohol use or drug use, um, mm -hmm. stress, certainly in this, <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Um, genetics can play a part in neurotransmitter systems being depleted. Oh, so yes. people come to me with their, their cups not full, their cups half full, you know? Yes. So using these targeted amino acids for each of the different systems that we've gone through help um, where you and I can work with our clients and help them to bring those systems up to level. And then sometimes when I, they say, well, when am I done? And I said, well, when you're overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like I feel so good okay so some because we both know too sometimes there's that reverse effect where if you're overflowing a, too much of a good thing can go the other way yeah. Yeah. it really the body can tell you when you're done and then you discontinue them and you may when you slowly wean them down in case you know you just need a lower dose finish the bottle or the use an a lower dose or um, tyrosine is what I use as needed now. I mean, for a while I was on a regular uh, program of using tyrosine mm -hmm. among some other amino acids, but now I just use it when I need it. And I can get mm -hmm. like that. I mean, it's just really amazing. Um, I also wanted to say on the endorphins, exercise is something really yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, especially with everybody being cooped up like this because exercise um, helps the endorphin system and fuels. Um, gets blood to the brain and <laughs> it, does. Uh, it does. And so to try to incorporate, uh, especially getting outside vitamin D, we could talk about getting outside, walking around the, the block. You know, I'm not saying everybody has to be a, a triathlete like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. And I'm not, I can't believe it where I live now. I live in the East Bay uh, area. We're not allowed to ride our bikes outside right now. So You're not? I thought you could at least walk. Okay, so there's two things. Yes, we could, but I've already gone on runs and walks. I go every single day. It's just okay. part of my recovery. It's part of my program mm -hmm. uh, in recovery. And so going outside and my friend and I were supposed to go out for a bike ride. And then they said, okay, social distance on your bike rides, <laughs> six feet apart. And then now 
no, this makes sense. You know, you're not supposed to ride your bike because if you get in an accident, then you're possibly would have to go to the hospital and take up valuable time for somebody else or put yourself at risk by being at the hospital. Okay. So yeah, anyway. What it, was, is what it, it is what it is. It is what you it know, is. People trying to stay safe, exactly. People are trying to stay safe, yes. But exercise could be, uh, tons of gyms are streaming for free online. Um, I know, I've seen it all day long in my inbox that different yoga studi studios, for the most part, I, I don't think you even have to be a member. I think you can just log in and they're streaming. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, for whomever wants to. Um, anyone who's a cyclist would be happy to know Peloton is doing it for free for the next three months. You don't have to have the Peloton bike. You, you do need to have a trainer, but I think they also do uh, they do yoga, they do other in-house in workouts as well. So That's let's cool. talk about the supplements you and I were talking about this morning um, in class for, for immune system building. Okay. And what's nice about some of the supplements that help support the immune system is they also support um, your transmitter production. So zinc is a very important one. Mm -hmm. And we're just thinking about using a little bit higher, sometimes a lot higher than normal of these supplements, not forever and ever, but just to boost our immune system, really give us an edge if we get exposed yeah. to the seam. Um, so vitamin C, at least two grams a day. Mm -hmm. That's not a ton. It's a lot of people will take it up to bowel tolerance when they start getting sort of loose stools, which there's nothing wrong with that. Some people don't want to take that much, but there's not, it's not going to hurt to take two grams a day. Mm -hmm. And there's some good evidence that it, it supports your um, immune system and your respiratory tract. And if you know that you are getting sick to use higher doses of that, very high doses of vitamin A for a short period of time, mm -hmm. high dose of vitamin D, um, lysine has been shown to be antiviral. You know, we don't want to like do everything under the sun and get really frantic and really scared, but find people who you trust, learn from them, and use an immune boosting protocol because it's not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. It gives us something to do. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about going nuts, right? And there's really good research out there that shows it can be helpful. Yes. Yes. And then fermented foods also, people should be making sure that they're mm -hmm. eating their sauerkraut, eating their um, cultured yogurt, full fat, mm -hmm. spicy, not too much sugar. Um, all, all, all of those things, but that's a different conversation. We, we can have an immune, an immune boosting conversation. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But right now we really want to focus on how we take care of ourselves to prevent cravings and to prevent relapse and feeding our brain what it needs for the nose neurotransmitters to work optimally and for blood sugar to stay stable is the key. Thank you for getting, see, <laughs> maybe I didn't take enough tyrosine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anything else before we close this? Very exactly. lovely conversation. Yes, it's so fun to talk to you about all of this. I love it. Um, so yeah, anything else? I mean, exactly what you just said. I, I really hope that um, everybody in the community is taking care of themselves as, uh, in regards to their recovery and relapse prevention, which you and I are you know, Christine and I are 100% about relapse prevention. We're here and available to help. Mm -hmm. uh, amino acid therapy might be something that people have heard about, but they have no idea what it is. It sounds, when I first heard amino acid therapy, I, I honestly had no idea what that even meant. Yeah. Supplements, it's just these simple supplements. They can be bought in your grocery store, probably most of them, because people aren't hoarding their amino acids. This is like this little secret we can all have to be able to take these amino acids um, to help us with the cravings. Yeah, and they help with the cravings and they help with our nervous system staying stable. And then we can uh, address the other two legs of the stool and get the emotional support, get the social support, um, and find and build on our spiritual resources. 
Well, that's exactly what I always say is that it gives you the, um, it, it gives you the ability to use the tools because we can be told, pick up the phone, you know, the hundred pound phone, pick up the phone, call, call your friend, call your sponsor, call someone else in recovery, um, mm -hmm. reach out or go for a walk or hold ice cubes or whatever it happens to be. <laughs> but you can't do that if your brain is not online. So exactly. Yes. All right. Well, more power to all of us and blessings to 